printing money is bad, mm -hmm. right? It's inflationary. Mm -hmm. uh, but borrowing printed money is insane. <laughs> Well, because just as today there were brokers and merchants that bought and sold precious metals and coins, in you the mean, Bible they were referred like to as the money changers. You're a money yeah, changer? You're a money changer. You're a money yeah. changer. Oh, I know so, a money changer. All right. Right, okay. right. So the money changers would stand in the middle and say and arbitrate the value of coin and money. That was their job. And so they, they were a thriving business, uh, and the more commerce there was, the more business they did. And the colonies, having found this way around uh, the coined money system and the bank notes of the Bank of England, started to thrive. And by 1750, we had employed Benjamin Franklin as a minister to go to England and uh, try to get you know things squared away, if you will. And, and the Brits at the time, now as being about 70, 60 years into their uh, central bank experiment with the Bank of England, found themselves in the midst of an enormous depression, caused no doubt by the policies of the Bank of England, where they issued far more notes than they had money to back it up, gold and silver coin to back it up. They didn't care about tax anticipation. They simply just created money and used it to further fund their schemes, uh, very many, East India Company and others. So the, the British system of banking, centered with the Bank of England, had produced a depression by 1750. And Ben Franklin's in, in, the, in England representing the colonies, and they asked Mr. Franklin, how is it that the colonies are so prosperous when we're in the midst of a depression. And we have the Bank of England since 1694. That's right. And that dude over there is a president. So he said, yeah. well, it's easy. In the colonies, we issue our own paper money in quantities sufficient to pass from hand to hand, in quantities sufficient to uh, maintain the needs of, of the marketplace without a central bank. And Parliament immediately, through the influences of the bankers, uh, started passing laws against this sort of behavior. And so they started closing down the land banks. No, no, that's not oh, wait right. Wait a minute, Parliament in England? England. Closed them down in Massachusetts? Yes. No, wait they were minute. colonies, don't forget. Okay, so yeah, we got to remember that. So back then, somehow, let's go back. Back then, somehow, the queen or the king, and it's, by the way, William of Orange was right. the dude, as Orange you William. said, Mm -hmm. Orange William in 1650, and they they think that the, they believe that they own the Netherlands and everything over there. So England was Scotland. They think they owned everything, right? Our own, That's right. You know, including uh, the all this thing we call now the United States. Well, the 13 original colonies. Don't forget, we had Spain in the middle there with the with purchases. Uh, we had France with the Louisiana uh, territory and and. You know, it wasn't strictly American. Even the Russians had an outpost in uh, the uh, Pacific, what is today the Pacific Northwest. Really? Putin was there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Putin's relative. Putin's relative. <laughs> so, so, you know, excuse me for being so uh, uh, such a uh, um, historic, Luddite. historical <laughs> Luddite, because who would teach this stuff? They didn't teach this stuff. They didn't teach this stuff. So this. back then in the 1600s, there was a lot of countries in, in the, what they called the colonies Mm. Well, in the continental United States, we kind had the 13 colonies. Yes, we had the 13 colonies along the East Coast yeah. from um, Rhode Island all the way down to South Carolina and parts of Florida. Mm -hmm. But then we had Spanish Florida and we had French Louisiana. Mm. And, you know, so beyond that, uh, there was a mix of powers. And uh, over the years, we consolidated, but that's a subject for another day. For the 13 colonies, the original colonies, they were all 13 uh, appendages of England. Of England. Yes. They were all British colonies. British colonies. And they were legislated, too, in superior form by the British Parliament. Now, it's true that each uh, colony had its own legislature, in, you know, making local laws. But like the federal government of today, they had this overarching power in England that would send edicts to the United States and through their royal governors of each colony uh -huh. and their redcoats, mm -hmm. they would uh, enforce whatever it is that they were putting into place. And so gotcha. we, had a, we had a series of acts starting in 1750 with Ben Franklin's revelation called the Townsend Acts. It was a bunch of them put in place 
uh, that uh, rectified these glaring problems from the perspective of England. One, eliminate land banks. Can't let the colonists issue their own paper money bottomed on land. Two, uh, eliminate uh, the idea of colonial notes, of, of notes issued by the colony. If the colony anticipated tax revenues and needed money, why, they could always turn to a British banker for a loan. They shouldn't be allowed to fill their own gap with, uh, and of course, the loan would bear interest, and the Bank of England would profit. So these series of Townsend Acts, if you want to Google that up, Mm -hmm. uh, you'll find the Stamp Act and the Tea Act and all those uh, um, niggling little taxes that uh, caused our forefathers to write in the articles, uh, excuse me, in the Declaration of Independence, that they sent forth a swarm of agents to harass us and eat out our substance. Oh, good for Taxes that. on so that started, everything. Why didn't Ben just keep his mouth shut? In hindsight, yeah, yeah maybe yeah. he should have. Of course, they would have figured it out anyway. So so this is tantamount to um, uh, the Bank of Dripping Springs uh, maybe printing their own notes Yep. And the Federal the Fed Reserve, getting Federal word Reserve of Bank of New York comes yeah. in and says, Why are you so prosperous down there in go, Dripping Springs? I, I think we should go swarm them, you know. Yes, let's swarm Dripping Springs and stop them from doing this. Yes, exactly right. And in fact, Peter Cooper, very famous Cooper Union guy, uh, said much later that it wasn't a little tax on the tea that, um, that caused us to revolt. We would have gladly borne a tax on tea. It was the bad influence of the British banks on the Parliament that caused them to pass these series of laws messing with our primitive, as it was, monetary system. That's what, more than anything, caused the revolution, the hard times that were put in place where we could not issue anticipation notes of any kind. And we had to constantly turn to British bankers connected with the Bank of England for the privilege of having money to circulate. And that was expensive, and it caused uh, quite the hardship for the typical American colonist. 